Welcome to the de Havilland Aircraft Museum. In this video, we're going to talk about a top secret project, Spider Crap, a 1943 jet fighter, also known as the DH-100 Vampire, the first jet to be created by de Havilland. In 1942, the residents of Hatfield, next to the de Havilland headquarters, complained about a weird noise coming from the factory. De Havilland's response was, this was just another generator that was being used. What the residents didn't know was what was actually happening is de, is de Havilland were building and developing a jet engine in 1942 at the height of the war. That engine was the Halford H1, which later became known as the Goblin. Frank Halford had worked alongside Frank Whittle, who was working in Gloucester's. And he was given the mission of building a centrifugal jet engine. Why so important? Well, it was already known that the Germans were developing jet engines. In fact, it was considered that they were probably ahead of what the British were able to do. And there was a very real risk that the enemy would not only develop successful jet engines, but use them for high-speed, high-altitude jet bombers to attack the country. What was needed, and what was needed urgently, was some sort of jet fighter that could take off and intercept those bombers in order to protect the, company, the country from that threat. What was needed then was a jet fighter, one that could be used in this country to fly at high altitude and intercept those potential high-speed jet bombers that might be attacking this country. Hence, the Spider Crab project was initiated. So this is the DH-100 Vampire. It first flew as a prototype in 1943 in great secrecy from Hatfield. In many respects, it was a very radical machine. In other respects, very similar to what de Havilland had already done. In terms of its radical design, first of all, you've got the engine at the back. What that meant is the entire fuselage could be lower down you didn't have a problem with propeller clearance. But because that engine was relatively low powered, what they had to do is build a twin boom tail to make sure that the efflux from that jet engine was not impacted as much as possible because they wanted to produce the maximum amount of thrust and the best possible performance. Also, in terms of radical changes, the wings were made out of metal and it, there was a slight sweep to the wings as well. In other respects, the de Havilland Vampire was a fairly conventional aeroplane. Uh, for example, the cannon, the standard 20mm Hispano Sousa cannon that we used on the de Havilland fighter bomber. The basic pilot's position would have been very, very familiar to somebody who was, for example, a Spitfire pilot. This particular vampire is equipped with an ejector seat. But they didn't actually come in until after the Second World War. So originally, you would have just had your ordinary seat. How did you get out? you turn the plane upside down and jumped out. Similarly, the actual controls, very, very similar to what you would have had in a normal conventional fighter plane. The gun sight, for example, similar sort of optical gun sight to what you'd have had on a Spitfire. No radar, no rockets. And also, significant parts of it were built out of wood. So a very basic machine. In fact, this has actually been called the RAF's last basic fighter. It entered service just a little bit too late 
to enter the war, but it was used for many years by the RAF and by other services right up until the 1950s. The de Havilland Vampire was a fairly successful design for its day. Over 4,000 of them were built. They were sold not only to the RAF, but also to South Africa, to Italy, uh, to France, and in this particular case, to Switzerland. Also, many different variants were uh, made available as well. Not just the fighter version, but a fighter bomber version, a night fighter version, as well as a trainer version. So a successful aeroplane and very much a pioneering plane. So the Vampire was a turning point in aviation, built using traditional construction materials, yet using this new jet engine. In many respects, looks like a modern jet, and yet in other respects, very much a traditional 1930s, 1940s plane. It was that stepping stone from the old to the new. And it ushered in the era of jet-powered fighters, which de Havilland was very much involved with after the war. At the museum, we've not only got this magnificent example of a fighter-bomber version of the Vampire, we've also got the Vampire trainer out in the field. We have got exhibits also of the Venom, which followed it, and exhibits on the Sea Vixen, which followed that. So you can see the lineage, when you come and see, come to the museum, you can see the lineage of those different planes. Hope you've enjoyed this particular video, in which case do like and subscribe, do share on social media. Also, come along to the museum and see for yourself. See you at the museum.